This is a magnesium bike frame. Magnesium is a fantastic metal and a criminally underrated material for making bike frames. But what are its advantages over aluminium, titanium, steel and carbon fibre? Well, in this video, that's exactly what I'm going to tell you. It's time for some science. Vast are one of the few manufacturers of magnesium frames and have agreed to support this video. But don't worry, the points we discuss are based on scientific fact and seriously interesting. And just to be clear, when we say magnesium, it's really just shorthand for magnesium alloys. Reason one, magnesium is seriously lightweight. It's the lightest usable metal. So it's lighter than aluminium and titanium, and this is because it's less dense. It's 59% less dense than titanium and 32% less dense than aluminium. I say lightest usable metal because there are metals lighter than magnesium. As we move out of the corner of the periodic table, the elements get heavier. So right in the corner, you've got hydrogen, very light, but it's not a metal. And then you have the metals, lithium and sodium. These are lighter than aluminium, but they're way more reactive and they're also very soft. To show how reactive they are, here is some sodium, which I definitely didn't steal from the University of Manchester Chemistry Department, just to be clear. Sodium is very soft. You can cut it with a knife. And here's what happens when you put it in water. It sets on fire. Don't try this at home. We also have beryllium above magnesium, but you wouldn't want to make a bike frame from that or put it on your chips because it's fantastically poisonous. So next we have magnesium with its atomic weight of 24. Now magnesium too is pretty reactive, but it's nowhere near as reactive as sodium. But wait a sec. I've heard of magnesium. That stuff can burn in air. It's flammable. Yeah, you might have seen that experiment in school, but the key thing with that is that was magnesium ribbon or magnesium powder. Magnesium powder and ribbon does burn at 600 degrees C, and that's why it's used in sparklers. The key take home message here is it's all about surface area. Magnesium ribbon and magnesium powder has a high surface area. It's much harder to set alight a big log of the stuff or the tube of a bike frame, which has a very low surface area. And to make that point, here is a kilogram of magnesium in the form of a bike frame, which I'm now going to try and set alight. Risking my life for everyone. Yeah. Um, it's just turning black with soot. That's pretty disappointing. No, it's just turning black with soot. <sighs> Never mind. Next. It's environmentally friendly. Carbon fibre has a dirty secret. It's terrible for the environment. The process of making it involves a lot of steps and a lot of chemicals, some of which aren't very nice. And once it's been made, it can't be recycled. Magnesium, on the other hand, is much better for the polar bears, being 100% recyclable. But what about all the other alloys? They can be melted down and recycled too. What's so special about magnesium? Well, you're right. They can, but magnesium's melting point is just 650 degrees, which means it requires much less energy to melt it down and recycle it, which is again, good for the environment. If you say compare it to titanium, which has a melting point of 1,670 degrees, polar bears are gonna be rejoicing. Yes, carbon fiber is lighter, being 30% less dense than magnesium. It also has a higher tensile strength, but it's less resistant to impacts than alloys like magnesium. Carbon fiber is more brittle and more likely to crack in the event of an impact. Yes, it can be repaired, but magnesium is much less likely to do this unless you're riding in cryogenic temperatures or the Arctic with, um, with polar bears, which, which there's probably going to be more of because you're, you're riding a a more environmentally friendly bike. This durability means that your magnesium frame might scratch, dent or 
pick up scars, but it will still probably be rideable, and we all know scars are cool. If you're going to be going on adventures or encountering rough terrain, alloy frames, not just magnesium, make a lot of sense. I mean, I would not dare do that to a carbon frame. <laughs> anyway. But wait, magnesium corrodes. What about that? Well, you're right, magnesium does corrode. That's partly down to the fact that it is a pretty reactive metal, as I mentioned at the start. However, that's why you don't ride a bare magnesium frame like this, but instead you use one that's been surface coated inside and out like this and then painted probably like that one. This is a special ceramic oxide coating applied using a technique known as plasma electrolytic oxidation. This surface hardens the outer surface of the material and provides a significant barrier against oxidation. If you scratch the frame through to the base metal, that will open up a gap or a slight fissure whereby corrosion can then ingress and take place. But this is much the same as an aluminium frame or a steel frame. However, according to Vast, if you do just scuff the paint, you're unlikely to go all the way through and take off this ceramic coating layer because it is so hard. In general, they would just advise that you treat it like any other alloy frame. And while we're on the subject of destroying your bike, if the worst does happen, cost is another advantage. It's a bit more expensive than aluminium, but it's way less expensive than carbon fibre and significantly cheaper than titanium. And part of the reason for this is because it's everywhere. It's the eighth most common element in the Earth's crust, and the sea is full of it. So get this, one cubic metre of seawater is said to contain 1.4 kilograms of magnesium, which is more than that. Mental. Also, bonus fact for you, all life on Earth depends on magnesium because magnesium atoms are found at the core of chlorophyll. Chlorophyll is a complex molecule found in all plants that's responsible for photosynthesis. This plant isn't real, but if it was, it would have chloroform in it. And magnesium. Magnesium is also much cheaper to extract from the natural environment than titanium. Now, yes, a carbon frame is lighter and stiffer, but with a magnesium frame, you're essentially getting 90% of the performance for 50% of the price. And the money saved, well, that can be spent on whatever you like. That's one of the freedoms that's afforded to you. However, I, I would suggest that you perhaps spend it on a ticket to the Global Bike Festival on the 16th of June, which is happening in Salbach, which also happens to be a, a region that is very high in, uh, in dolomite, the, uh, the natural ore that magnesium comes from. Next, it's much easier to precision engineer. With alloy frames, it's, well, much better suited to machining and precision engineering, especially areas such as the bottom bracket. Of course, there is a caveat to this. It will depend on the exact type of bottom bracket standard that is employed in a given frame, but the advantage of having a single piece of alloy which you can then accurately machine on both sides means that you can much more easily achieve perfect alignment of your bottom bracket on both sides of the frame, which results in a perfectly smooth spinning chain set. This can be achieved on carbon frames, but it's much harder to do so and much more costly. But why does magnesium have these amazing properties? Well, it's time for some chemistry, inorganic chemistry to be precise. Strap yourselves in and don't worry, because I'm going to explain this in a way that even non-chemists can understand. On an atomic level, metals are crystalline, and a lot of their properties depend on the structure and shape of these crystals. Now, magnesium and titanium form a special crystal known as a hexagonal close packed lattice. This is different from the crystal structure found in, say, aluminium or iron and steel and has some key advantages. The hexagonal lattice of magnesium also has another key advantage vibration dampening. Now, to a material scientist, vibration dampening is all about what's known as the Young's modulus which is the modulus of elasticity. The lower the Young's modulus, the more readily the material deforms. 
VAST uses a special alloy of magnesium in its frames called AE81, which has a Young's modulus of 44 gigapascals. In comparison, aluminium 6061 has a Young's modulus of 69, titanium 114, and Reynolds 953 steel 207. According to VAST, this shows that AE81 magnesium will deform more readily during elastic deformation and will consequently dissipate vibrational energy rather than transferring it through the frame to the rider. So in non-nerd speak, basically means it's more compliant than other alloys. But this can have a disadvantage, meaning that it's softer and more flexible. But that is why you don't use pure magnesium to make a bike frame. This is where alloys come in. So there you have it, a big bunch of reasons why magnesium is a seriously underrated material for making bikes. Thanks to Vast for supporting this video. Also cool detail, at the bottom of the down tube on the Vast bike, it's got a recycling symbol, which I think is pretty nice. And also, I don't know any of the bikes that have that on. Now, if you've enjoyed it, you know what to do. If you found it interesting, comment below, let us know your thoughts and, you know, like it and thumbs up and subscribe. And if you've got any friends, share it with them. And uh, I'll see you in the next one. I'm gonna go now. Love you, bye.